The Boston Bruins are reportedly set to interview five candidates for their head coaching position. And I'm going to finish my series on Don Sweeney's trade history here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Thursday, June 16th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day. The podcast is free and available on all platforms, so just open up your podcast app, smash that subscribe button. Each new episode will be automatically added to your feeds for you to download, listen, and enjoy. The podcast is also on YouTube. We're nearing 500 subscribers. I'd love to get that number climbing each and every day. So please subscribe over there as well. Even if you just listen to the podcast on your podcast app and uh, tell a friend about the podcast today as well. You can find me on twitter at ian c mclaren and you can follow the podcast on twitter and instagram at locked nhl bruins lifelong bruins fan been covering this team for various outlets for about 17 years and of course yesterday was the 11th anniversary of boston's stanley cup championship game seven win over the vancouver canucks in 2011 didn't mention it yesterday because i was speaking with uh, chris from locked on golden knights about the bruce cassidy hiring in vegas the bruins reportedly set to interview five guys for their vacant head coach position and this is according to uh joe mcdonald of the uh, worst Worcester, Worcester. What am I saying? The Worcester. Uh, what is it called? The Worcester Telegram and Gazette. He reported yesterday that the Bruins are scheduled to interview the following people: Jim Montgomery, Jay Leach, Joe Sacco, Spencer Carberry, and David Quinn. A couple of those guys were cited in a report from Elliot Friedman earlier this week. And they're all a mix of, uh, you know, college, AHL, some NHL assistant head coach experience. And they're looking for, according to Don Sweeney, a process-driven and structured guy who can bridge the communication gap between older and younger players. Now, it's interesting that one of the candidates is Joe Sacco. He previously coached the Colorado Avalanche and has been an assistant with the Bruins since 2014. So going back to Claude Julien and through the whole Bruce Cassidy era, he filled in for Cassidy when he was out with COVID-19 this past season. And this would be, uh, you know, Sacco may be deserving of a shot to coach an NHL team, but to fire Cassidy and just replace him with a guy who's been in the organization for seven years doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, Now, Jay Leach, current assistant coach with the Seattle Kraken. He was former head coach of the Providence Bruins, is in the mix. Uh, Former BU and New York Rangers head coach David Quinn. Former Denver University and Dallas Stars head coach Jim Montgomery. We talked about him and his past issues the other day. 
and former Providence Bruins assistant coach and current Toronto Maple Leafs coach Spencer Carberry have all been lined up. We knew about Leach. We knew about Montgomery. Um, Montgomery, like I said the other day, he has been an assistant coach with the St. Louis Blues for the past couple of seasons after being fired by the Stars due to unprofessional conduct. Uh, he later admitted to struggling with alcohol. That was behind his dismissal, and that has since been addressed through treatment. Um, Carberry, like I said, spent this past season as an assistant coach for the Maple Leafs, where he worked on their power play. Uh, he earned that NHL gig after serving three years as head coach of the AHL's Hershey Bears and one season working with the Providence Bruins. Uh, one name that was not on the list is Nate Lehman. Uh, Providence College, highly regarded by Bruins management, but he just recently signed a long-term extension to stick around with Providence. Uh, so you can see why he might not want to jump to a somewhat tenuous position with the Boston Bruins. Now you'll notice that there were no kind of big name coaches out there. John Tortorella reportedly set to be hired by the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Barry Trotz not on the list. You know, a guy like Mike Babcock, thankfully not on the list. Uh, the Bruins won't be hiring a guy who they're going to have to pay multi-millions of dollars to coach their team. It will be... Um, yeah, a, a new NHL head coach, a first-year NHL head coach, or a guy with some past experience looking for another shot. Now, another name that could come up is Mark Savard. The Windsor Spitfires lost the OHL championship to the Hamilton Bulldogs last night in a Game 7. And Jeff Merrick said afterwards that now that Windsor's season is over, he's told Spitfire's head coach Mark Savard will meet with a couple NHL teams. You'd hope that Boston's one of them. I do believe Dallas is another, uh, as he has a good working relationship with uh, one of their top prospects. I can't remember off the top of my head uh, who that is. But, um, yeah, Windsor Spitfires have a player who was drafted by the Dallas Stars. Uh, who is it again? And uh, it's believed that they might want to bring him with uh, this player in order to... Um, yeah, help him succeed at the next level. And that player is Wyatt Johnston. Sorry, I blanked on his name there for a bit. Wyatt Johnston this past season, under Mark Savard, 46 goals, 78 assists for 124 points. I believe he was in the running or was named outstanding player for the in the OHL this season. So those are the players that uh, or sorry those are the coaches that are being interviewed reportedly that we know of Mark Savar could jump on that list uh, and of course we'll keep you posted here on the locked on Boston Bruins podcast you know our friends at Built Bar are always coming out with amazing new flavors well this time they've truly outdone themselves with their new mud pie flavor and for the first time ever Built is introducing the new mud pie flavor in both a bar and puff form. Not sure what mud pie tastes like? Well, if you're a chocolate fan, you'd better sit down for this. The new mud pie is rich with whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble. you got to try this as soon as possible. 
Now, all built products are low calorie, high protein, and low sugar. Mud Pie is packed with 16 grams of protein, only 150 calories, and 8 grams of sugar. It's like your mom baked the most delicious, creamy chocolate mud pie and wrapped it up just for you. They also have a collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. Chocolate mousse, whipped cream, cookies and cream crumble, stop drooling, get to Built.com to order your box in mud pie bars and puffs now. Use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you so much again for making Locked on Bruins part of your day. We want to learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. You can go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash NHL, sorry, slash survey right now to get started. Let us know what you like about Locked On Podcasts and what can be improved. won't take very long and you can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. Take the survey at LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Thank you so much for your help. Ooh, I apologize for uh, being a bit off my game this morning. I am struggling with a bit of a sore throat. Didn't sleep too great, so got a bit of a brain fog going on. Uh, you know, had COVID like six weeks ago. Still uh, rears its ugly head from time to time. Anyways, let's now finish our series on Don Sweeney's trade history. Most recently... I looked at the trades with the Anaheim Ducks in 2020. Uh, The Bruins made one minor trade with the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, sending a 2020 seventh round pick to Toronto in exchange for a seventh round pick in 2021, which they used to select um, defensemen. Ty Gallagher from Boston University. Let's jump to the 2021 NHL trade deadline, which was a bit later in the year because of uh, the shortened COVID season. On April 11th, the Bruins made a deal with the Ottawa Senators, sending a third round pick in 2022. Uh, So that will be used by Ottawa in less than a month at the draft. And the Bruins acquired defenseman Mike Riley. Riley appeared in uh, 15 regular season games for the Bruins with 8 assists to his credit, 4 assists in 11 playoff games in his first season. And then he signed a 3-year, $9 million contract with the Bruins in the off season, uh, and he remains on the books for two more seasons at $3 million. Uh, in 2021-22, 17 points in 70 games, zero points in five playoff games. And he could be a candidate to be moved this off season to clear some cap space, although his recent Ankle surgery might cloud that a bit. It was believed that he or Matt Grizzlick could be perhaps on the block to clear some cap space. Both guys on the injured list at the moment. So that could cloud potential moves there. A day later, Don Sweeney made arguably one of his best trades as Boston Bruins general manager. But there's a caveat there. He sent Anders Bjork in a second round pick in 2021 to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for Taylor Hall and Curtis Lazar. The Sabres also retained 50% of Taylor Hall's $8 million contract. A complete steal for the Bruins there. Now... That was made possible by the fact that 
Taylor Hall had a no movement clause and could basically dictate where he wanted to go. So it wasn't as though Sweeney bamboozled the Sabres necessarily, got them to agree to a lesser deal than what they may have gotten from another team. But to add Curtis Lazar into the mix and only have to give up Anders Bjork, you know, the Sabres didn't have to trade Taylor Hall, but he wanted to come to Boston. The Sabres elected to take not whatever they could get, but, you know, something in exchange for Hall. And the Bruins ended up with him and subsequently signed him to a four-year, $24 million contract. Taylor Hall made an immediate impact with the Bruins, 14 points in his first 16 games in the regular season, uh, found some great chemistry with David Krejci in 2021, five points in 11 playoff games last year, and in 2021-22, he had 61 points in 81 regular season games. Uh, I believe it was the fourth most productive season of his career. And he really benefited from playing with David Pasternak on the second line. And he'll remain with the team for the next three seasons at a cap hit of $6 million. Curtis Lazar was a great depth player for the Bruins. Uh, he really impressed me in the playoffs. He only had one goal, but he was fantastic in a fourth-line role. He's an unrestricted free agent. The Bruins have said they're interested in retaining him, but um, might not be prudent to um, re-sign him when they have such limited cap space. But that deal... Amazing for the Boston Bruins and a win on Don Sweeney's resume. That was it for the 2021 uh, trade deadline. They made a couple deals, minor deals uh, in the offseason, acquiring James Greenway from the Maple Leafs for future considerations. Uh, defenseman who spent most of the season with the ECHL's main Mariners. Uh, they then sent Dan Vladar to the Calgary Flames for a 2022 third round pick that they will cash in in a few weeks here. Uh, in February, they acquired Michael Callahan from the Arizona Coyotes. He was a fifth round pick in 2018, played this past season for uh, Providence College, and then he made the jump to the Providence Bruins. So a nice... Uh, left-hand shot defensive prospect for the Bruins. And then on March 19th, they made another huge trade with the Anaheim Ducks. And uh, we'll talk about that here in a moment. But first, I want to thank you once again for making Locked on Bruins your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked On NHL podcast. They have you covered for the playoffs like no other. You can hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday, free and available wherever you get prospects. And they'll be all over last night's uh, 4-3 win by the Colorado Avalanche in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Final, thanks to Andre Burakovsky's overtime heroics so the latest two deals on Don Sweeney's record one was a huge one again with the Anaheim Ducks and it was kind of similar to the uh, David Bacchus Andre Kasha trade although this time around they acquired a player who will be with the team for several more years so they traded uh, the remains of John Moore's contract, which was one more year at $2.75 million. Uh, they traded 2017 
18th overall draft pick, defenseman Yerho Vakaninen, a first round pick in 2022, a second round pick in 2023 and 2024, to the Ducks for Hampus Lindholm, a 28 year old left hand shot defenseman who they signed to a contract extension eight years, $52 million. Lindholm will be with the team through 2029-2030 and will form a top defensive duo with Charlie McAvoy for yeah years to come. They're the two Bruins under contract uh, for the longest period of time. Both will be signed through 2029-30 at a combined cap hit of $17.5 million as, oh sorry, $18 million as McAvoy will have a cap hit of 9.5, Lindholm 6.5. So any talk of the Bruins rebuilding, tearing it down, difficult to see a full on tear down because you have these two guys signed for eight seasons. $17.5 million. You're not paying them, signing them that long to carry the team through a rebuild. The Bruins are pretty solid on the back end with Swayman, Allmark and Nett, McAvoy, Lindholm, Grizzlick, Carlo, even Derek Forbort emerged as a pretty good option in the playoffs. Zborl coming in, uh, Mike Riley still around. The defense is pretty solid for the Bruins once everybody's healthy, of course. Um, and those two signings signal to me that they're not wanting to take a huge step back. The acquisition of Hampus Lindholm was made knowing that there's some uncertainty about Patrice Bergeron's future about David Pasternak's extension, but they're very solid on the back end, and Don Sweeney, once he signs his contract extension, has that to work with and that to build on. They desperately need help down the middle. Um, they need Pasternak to sign a contract. They're going to have a lot of flexibility after next season with um, Felino, Smith, Haula, Nosik, Wagner all coming off the books, as well as Connor Clifton. Um, so there will be a lot of flexibility to retool up front, especially after next season. It's kind of why I think Bergeron will come back to see it out with this group um, at least one more year to play with these veterans that they brought in last season, see what a new head coach can perhaps accomplish. Uh, but the Lindholm trade... Coupled with the Hall trade, uh, those were two veteran guys in the primes of their careers. Um, you don't bring those guys in if you're planning a full-on rebuild. Now, circumstances may dictate that they take a step back this season with all the injuries, but I don't think they have in view a full-on uh, rebuilding situation here as evidenced by those two trades. I really like Lindholm. I love Taylor Hall. I'm happy that they're Bruins, and hopefully Don Sweeney can build something around them and the other guys who are still in place this offseason while redeeming himself from this crazy decision to let Bruce Cassidy go. Still not over that. The more I talked about it yesterday even, the more irritated I got, just wondering what they were thinking. But there's these candidates in place, and we'll, of course, continue to root for this team. Been through a lot of ups and downs with them over the years. Things seem bleak, gray, questionable at the moment, but we press on and continue to talk about this team every day and hope for the best here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. Hope you're all having a great week. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. 
will be a mailbag episode. We've got a bunch of questions already to answer, but if you have any that you want to send by about the Bruins, anything you want me to answer, send them to Locked NHL Bruins on Twitter or Instagram, or send them directly to me at Ian C. McLaren. Happy Thursday, friends, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow here on the Locked On Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.